the B-25, the Billy Mitchell. She's built for low-level torpedo and long-range-level bombing. From now on, she's your ship. You'll want to know her like the back of your hand. So grab a shoot pack and we'll try her out. A good pilot begins every flight with a thorough visual inspection. We'll do the same. Make sure your nose gear locking pin is engaged with cap on. Otherwise, a shimmy will develop when you taxi. Check your shock struts for pressure and your tires for proper inflation, according to your load. Are your wheel chocks in place? The control surfaces, the body of the airplane, the nacelles, and the wing. Examine them all for evidence of gasoline or oil leakage. Never enter your plane without checking the front fuel cell, rear fuel cell, an auxiliary fuel cell on each wing. Make sure you have at least 21 gallons of oil in each oil reservoir. Replace the gasoline filler cap with care, making sure the handle folds to the rear to prevent slipstream from working the cap loose during flight. All these and many other items should have been checked for you, but play safe. Look for trouble yourself. As you enter the hatch, check the air bottle for your emergency brakes. It must be charged to between 550 and 600 pounds pressure. See that all three escape hatches are unlocked so that in an emergency, someone can get to you from outside. Always fasten your safety belt before you leave the line. Unlock the flying controls and adjust the pilot seat for comfort. Make sure the locking lever is secured in the down position. Put on your throat microphone and headset. Check the ignition switches off and set your parking brakes. If your plane has been inactive for more than 15 minutes, have your props pulled through 10 or 12 blades before you start the engines. This is highly important. Oil may have drained into the lower cylinders. Next, connect the external battery supply, if one is available, so you won't run down the airplane's batteries. Now start a methodical tour of your instruments. First, turn on the fuel emergency shutoff valves, then the generator and active inverter switches. Open cowl flaps, close oil shutters, move mixture control into full rich position, open your throttles one half inch to give about a thousand RPM, and lock the automatic pilot off. Turn on battery disconnect switches. Next, switch on your ignition and fuel booster pumps. A good pilot always starts his right engine first. Energize the starter, then prime five to seven shots at one second each if the engine is cold, or one to three shots if the engine is hot. Now, after you've warned the ground crew and made sure someone is standing by with a fire extinguisher, mesh the starter until the engine starts. However, don't hold the starter engaged for long periods. You'll burn out your booster coils. Oil pressure should rise to 40 pounds within 30 seconds after the engine takes hold. If it doesn't, cut the engine and investigate. If it does, start your left engine the same way you did your right. There's an alternate method of starting, which many pilots prefer. You can engage the starter and prime as necessary while the engine is turning over. Idle and warm up your engines at 1,000 to 1,200 RPM. They are not warmed up to a safe point for takeoff until cylinder head temperature registers 150 degrees and oil temperature 40 degrees, at which time the oil cooler shutters may be opened. Next, both pilot and co-pilot go through the checklist, item by item. Nose gear locking pin, checked, okay. Automatic pilot, locked off. Now check your flying controls for free and proper movement and make sure the controls respond. The co-pilot looks out to watch the movement of rudders, elevators, and ailerons. The checklist continues. De-icer control, off. Pilot hatch, closed and locked. Lower turret, retracted. All hatches closed. It's time now to check your fuel levels. Suction, 3.75 to 
General hydraulic pressure, 800 to 1,100 pounds. Brake pressure, 1,000 to 1,200 pounds. Fuel booster pumps, both on. Fuel pressure, 6 to 7 pounds. Now you're ready to trim your tabs. Trim elevators from zero to one quarter degree tail heavy, depending on the center of gravity position. Ailerons zero and rudder zero. Propeller, full increase RPM. Check mixture at full rich position and lock snug. Lock your supercharger in low. Open the oil cooler shutters. Carburetor air, normal, unless icing conditions prevail. Wing flaps come down 15 degrees for normal takeoff. Control neutral. Cowl flaps open. Controls neutral. Emergency brake control, safety. Emergency hydraulic selector valve, normal. Fuel emergency shutoff valves, on. Set your cockpit and compartment heaters off. They're the combustible type, unsafe to use during takeoff. See that your static pressure selector handle is set at normal and your gyro instruments uncaged. While you're on the ground, never release the landing gear safety lock or throw the safety latch. If you do, then the landing gear lever might accidentally be lifted and a B-25 is not designed for digging tunnels. Someone's carelessness in securing the safety lock and latch in the plane made this ridiculous accident possible. Propellers cost money. You can't throw them away like matches. Another word of caution. Before running up your engines on the line, always look behind you to make sure that your prop blast won't endanger persons or property. Your next step is to check the propeller controls at about 2100 RPM. Move controls to full decrease and note decrease in RPM. Then shift controls to full increase and RPM should return to original setting. Check magnetos at 25 inches of manifold pressure and 1800 to 2000 RPM. A drop of 75 RPM on one magneto is nothing to worry about. If there's a greater drop, or if undue engine vibration develops, investigate at once. If your magnetos check okay, you're about ready to go. Now a final check of cylinder head temperature, oil temperature, and oil pressure. And you're ready to contact the control tower for permission to taxi. When you get it, have your chocks removed. Release your parking brakes. And you're on your way. You don't try to turn before your ship gets moving. To do so would put dangerous side stress on the nose wheel. You remember to use your brakes cautiously until you're familiar with their action. Brake pedal forces are light. They don't build up in proportion to pedal travel. So you steer with the throttles as much as you can.